What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video We're gonna be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution Humble Origins 2 pack Senator Shockwave and Data Clerk Orion packs now This is a set which personally I've been super excited for because it's slightly more out there When in comparison to the minor Megatron set because we have never before seen I don't believe an action figure of Senator Shockwave You know he does look insanely cool and I think this is one of the biggest draws that some of these IDW character designs have going for them is that they are just so different from anything which we've seen previously so yeah really excited to check this one out you know we get some fantastic artwork and Hasbro once again back at it kind of sprinkling in a few easter eggs as to who we can maybe expect to see in a future wave because that definitely does look like Nova Prime and if I were to gauge as to what character or mold they may use for this in the future I think I'd say the Siege Galaxy upgrade Optimus especially if you check out the leg design and some of the kibble that we have smacked onto the forearms but as we come around here to the back of the packaging we get some insanely cool CG renders of both Shockwave of Orion packs in both robot and vehicle mode. I know for the most part they are just retool slash repakes of pre-existing figures, but much like the Rise of Tyranny set, two very clever retools. So with that being said, let's crack these guys open, let's stack them up alongside their original mold mates and see whether or not this set is a pickup or a pass. Now we're going to be kickstarting this double review off by checking out the Data Clerk Orion packs. Now I know recently it seems like we've had quite a few Orion figures, but I don't think any of them specifically based on this design. And at least in my own personal collection, I own the version that we saw as part of the Power of the Prime's Leader Optimus, and then the Legacy release which we saw come packaged with Alpha Trion. None of them are nowhere near as badass in my opinion as this guy. You know he does look awesome. It's kind of a fantastic reimagining of that Orion packs character. And to be honest with you guys, I wouldn't mind if this was exactly the design that we're going to be seeing in the upcoming Origins Transformers animated movie because yeah he does look pretty cool but as we check out the truck mode you know much like Minor Megatron and Senator Ratbat a great retool of a pre-existing figure this did originally start out as being a Siege Hound mold but they did change quite a bit I mean for example the entire front section is completely modified really does give you this heavy armored Cybertronian off-road vehicle think it looks awesome we get a complete brand new windscreen these sections are also modified and because the shins and the knees are new in the bot mode so is the back of the truck but pretty much everything else is a direct carryover very nice repaint you know I love the kind of light blue that we have here for the windscreen and those rectangular headlights but anyway for a comparison here we have him alongside the siege hound so yeah definitely noticeable differences from the front as you turn them to the side you know the similarities are a little more obvious due to them basically being exactly the same in terms of transformation but yeah, pretty decent retool. Now, this guy does come with quite a few accessories. You can smack all of them onto the vehicle mode to kind of give him this armored look. Some of them look better than others. I mean, for example, the axe, I think, looks a little out of place. But you know what? They're on Cybertron. Who's to say they wouldn't have a massive axe kind of swinging out of the side of their truck mode? But anyway, getting stuck into this guy's transformation to kickstart things off with, you are just going to want to take the toes and flip these pieces here up on both sides. We can then turn this guy here to the underside, take the forearms and just attach those. The next step is to take these pieces and just pull them away from the front of the truck and then come around here to the back take this section detach it and lift it upwards and then split here at what will become the knees in the robot mode once you've done that we can fully extend out all of these joints you know the clearance is a little tight but you guys can definitely get it done so pull this piece here out what I would then recommend to do would be to take the shoulders angle these here out to the sides and then bring this entire chest compartment here down we can then take this piece fold it upwards and that little slot is going to find itself going here into that tab so snap that into place we can then take this back panel and just slide it there take the shoulders lock them in rotate here at the biceps and do the exact same on the opposite side and in terms of the transformation for the lower half you basically just want to straighten the foot out ratchet this piece here upwards it's on a very soft kind of indented joint and then that little tab is going to smack itself into that little slot so peg that in there and do the exact same here for the opposite side and bang, here we have Orion Pax fully transformed into his robot mode. And it's got to go back to my earlier point, you know, what a fantastic reimagining of that original Orion character. You know, I'm always used to him being a little slender, a little puny in terms of design. But even in this form, you know, before the whole matrix of leadership, this guy does look pretty awesome. You know, he's kind of jacked in terms of design. So yeah, can only hope that he looks half as good as this in the upcoming animated Transformers movie. But as we get stuck into the details, fantastic looking head sculpt, especially with the kind of paint details 
detail that we have going around the outside of the mouthpiece. That looks pretty sick. You know, you do get a few references to the Optimus Prime design, such as the way the crest has been sculpted, but pretty sick looking chest. And I do like the colors on this guy. You know, the red and the blue plastic do look awesome. And check out those tiny little yellow bursts that we have here onto the crotch plate. Yeah, just all in all, very nicely done looking figure. This is how he stacks up from the back. In terms of his articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so you know, it can look up and down, rotate left to right. Nothing on this guy feels loose, despite this being a retool of Siege Hound. I know that was a slight issue that I and many of you guys had with the minor Megatron, but for the most part, everything on this guy does feel pretty sturdy. You know, we get a great range out of the arms, surprisingly a waist joint, despite the whole backpack configuration. The hips can kick forwards that far, back to that far, out to the sides, and I love how he has a way past 90 degree bend, only on a single pin joint here out of the knee. That's pretty sick. And we do get the signature Legacy slash War for Cybertron ankle rocker pivot. Now, as we very quickly talk through accessories, he does come with the same blaster as well as ammo clip that we saw with the Siege Hound. You know, it's not bad. I kind of like the whole customization ability of this. You know, how you can swap the ammo belt to the left or the right hand side or just remove it completely and smack it onto the back. That's pretty awesome. But one of the new accessories he comes with, which I think is sick, would be this Cybertronian Energon Axe. And, you know, the second I saw this, I thought, wow, I'm going to cop this for my studio series Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime because, yeah, this does look pretty awesome. You know, the way the axe has been designed, just super striking. It does look pretty sick. You know, I like all of the kind of spiked edges that we have on the side. Pretty decent paintwork. And you know what? Not even the handle is too bad. And I also like how they sculpted this piece on the outside so that when you have this pegged into the figure's hand, it does look like he's actually gripping a hold of it. And you know, it's not just slid through. So that's pretty awesome. You can remove the tip of this if you wanted to. It's mainly for the vehicle mode storage, which I showcased previously. But yeah, pretty decent looking figure overall. Now, as we get stuck into a few comparisons, here we have the Legacy Orion Pax alongside the Siege Hound. And much like we saw from Minor Megatron and Ratbat, what a fantastic repaint slash retool. You know, so far, I've been incredibly impressed by this kind of IDW subline. I can only hope they continue this going forward because, yeah, these are just super awesome. But in terms of what is brand new in robot mode, the head sculpt, the chest, as well as the entire lower leg assembly. Besides that, I do just think he is an incredibly clever repaint of Siege Hound. So... Yeah, it's definitely pretty impressive. This is how they both stack up from the sides. Here they are from the back. Maybe would have been cool to have seen them got rid of this kind of panel behind the head. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. And I think it's something that we're also going to see featured on the Studio Series Hound and the Detritus that is coming out for Legacy Wave 4. So... Yeah, all in all, definitely a very solid looking figure. Here we have him stacked up alongside the original, the G1 slash Legacy Orion packs. And at least in terms of my own personal preference, this guy looks so much more badass. I mean, there was a reason why Megatron was able to take this guy clean out. And it's because he's just so slender and puny looking. You know, this version based on IDW does look jacked, does look as if though he could maybe even go up against or at least try to go up against Megatron in this form. So... Yeah, personally, I do just much prefer the design here of the IDW release. And then finally, here he is alongside the Origins Megatron. So at the moment, an incredibly impressive subline of figures. You know, if you never picked up any of the previous versions of these molds, and even if you did, I still think you're going to be pretty happy with these because they definitely do stand out from the rest. But the best is still yet to come because here we have Senator Shockwave. And hands down, the IDW Legacy figure, which I was the most excited to check out. Because not only is this a massive departure from the Shockwave that I'm used to, but it's also an incredibly clever and banging retool of that Siege Cybertronian Tetrajet Starscream. And to be honest, all they've retooled are these two pieces on the side. They've basically given him brand new wings. So now he has these massive thrusters slash intakes. And they've also packed on a pair of additional wings just to further differentiate it from that Starscream mold. So yeah, all in all incredibly impressive. Here he is stacked up alongside his original mold mate. So yeah, an incredibly clever retool. And I think these IDW releases are just showing us how well done Hasbro can do retools and repaints if they truly put the time and the budget into it because he does look pretty awesome. But as we get stuck into his transformation because there are a few things which are slightly different when in comparison to the Siege Starscream, the first thing you're going to want to do is basically just untap these wings here away from the forearms. Do the exact same here for this side. You'll then want to come around here to the back and take the chest piece. Now, whilst it still doesn't have a pin shot through it, it does hold on there way better than pretty much any of my Siege Starscream molds, whether it be some of the other Seeker repaints or the actual Starscream himself. So yeah, that's pretty cool to see them finally fix the tolerances. But once you've done that, we can then basically take this here and shift it upwards. I'd recommend to take these sections and angle them out to the sides. It does just help to get them out of the way. And then we can take this thruster, kind of hinge it inwards and then bring it all the way down, snap it, 
into place and then smack it here into the back. The next step is to take the forearms and detach them away from the outside of the legs and then just straighten these out. I think it's super awesome that they still kept the kind of spring-loaded mechanism that helps to fill in the back of the legs. That's pretty awesome, but do the same here for this side. We'll then rotate here at the waist. You'll then want to take the brand new chest piece, pull this section forward, and it does take a bit of force, but you're going to want to make sure that you snap it into place. Otherwise, there will be a little bit of a gap. So make sure that you peg it in there securely. We can then flip the head forward, take this section here, hinge this here out to the back. And then in terms of this whole assembly, again, this was a little tough on some of my previous Seeker molds. It's way easier to split down the middle this time around. So pretty cool to see them finally fix the tolerances, but just hinge all of this here up. And as I'm sure you guys would expect, these tabs are going to find themselves shooting into these slots. So just snap that into place, come around here to this side, and do the exact same. We can then take the toes and the heel spurs and just flip these here forwards on both sides. And then for some finishing touches, what you're gonna wanna do is open up the forearms, rotate the hands out, extend the elbow joint, snap this into place, and then take these pieces. To be honest, you could leave them like this and kind of have them as forearm daggers, completely up to you guys. But I believe the official transformation is to kind of hinge them backwards and then rotate them so the tips are facing towards the top of the shoulders, which isn't a bad look. So do the exact same here for this side. So hinge this piece here out, rotate at the wrist, extend that elbow joint down, smack it into place, and then rotate this section here forwards. And bang, here we have Senator Shockwave fully transformed into his robot mode. And again, you know, it's a massive departure to the traditional Shockwave that we all know from G1. But much like Minor Megatron and Orion Pax, the reason why I believe he looks like this is because it's kind of a pre-war version of Shockwave, you know, an origin Shockwave, I guess you could say. And yeah, again, it's a pretty cool take on the character. So as we get stuck into the details, I mean, first of all, gone is that traditional Cyclops eye. He actually has two. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. What I will say, is the head does look considerably smaller in proportion to the rest of the figure. I am wondering if that's due to them using this Starscream mold. You know, the head can only be a certain size due to the cavity on the back. So yeah, that's a bit of a shame, but we still get some very nice detail here for these shoulder sections and a brand new chest piece. I mean, this looks really sick, especially in terms of the painted detail. So that's pretty cool. Again, if you wanted to, you could take these pieces, flare them out to the sides. Personally, I think that looks a little better. And due to him now having these massive intakes in jet mode, he does have a little bigger back pack when in comparison to Starscream, but luckily due to the way it's kind of put together, it is pretty articulated. So you can hinge these sections upwards if you wanted to, you could compress them slightly closer into the body, or you could even recess them backwards, completely up to you guys. But the crotch piece is also brand new and surprisingly they did paint the thighs and I'm not too sure why, because the plastic on its own is already gray. So yeah, that does look pretty cool. In terms of articulation, for the most part, no degradation of the mold. There is one area such as the ankles, which I think, you know, maybe could have done with a bit of tightening up, but the head is on a ball joint, so it will look left to right. It can slightly tilt up and down, not to the greatest, unfortunately. The shoulders will go out to the sides. We do get a pretty sick butterfly rotation, forwards and backwards, rotation at the bicep, as well as a really nice double bend here out of the elbow. Wrist rotation, as well as waist rotation, which I love to see. The hips can kick forwards that far, so that's pretty fantastic. And due to them now casting all of this in this blue it really does allow you to appreciate some of that kind of Cybertronian techie detail so yeah that's pretty awesome they will kick back to that far as well as out to the sides we get a nice thigh rotation way past 90 again only on a single hinge joint out of the knee so that's pretty cool in terms of the ankle pivot much like Starscream it is a little lacking but it's definitely there and due to transformation you can pivot the foot forwards and backwards although yeah a little looser than I'd like maybe easy to tighten that up due to it just being on a screw so yeah definitely a pretty cool looking figure unfortunately Unfortunately, besides the two accessories that we have pegged onto the forearms, he doesn't come with any weaponry, so no blaster or no blade like we saw with Orion Pax, Origin Megatron, and Senator Ratbat, which is a bit of a shame, but yeah, just as a robot, definitely a very cool looking design. Now, getting stuck into a few comparisons for their robotic modes, here we have Shockwave compared alongside Siege Starscream. So, again, an incredibly clever retool of a pre-existing figure. To kind of show you guys just what exactly is brand new, the head, the wings, as well as the crotch piece and the chest piece. Besides that, I believe it's just identical to Starscream, but to kind of go back to my earlier point, with the lighter shade of blue, it really does allow you to appreciate some of the details, such as all of the intricate mechanical sculpting that we have packed into the kneecaps, where it was definitely very light 
lost on the bland grey plastic here of the Starscream mold. So in terms of which out of the two I personally prefer, again, I'm going to give it to the IDW character. I do just think they look so awesome. Next up, here we have Shockwave stacked up alongside Shockwave. And this is definitely a case where you cannot beat the original. You know, the G1 Shockwave will forever be so iconic because this is just such a striking, sinister looking Decepticon. But yeah, it is kind of crazy. Maybe I'm going to have to go out and do a bit of reading to actually understand how this Shockwave became this Shockwave. I might have to try and track down some of those IDW comics, but yeah, as you guys can see, a massive departure from how he ended up in Transformers G1. Here he is alongside the Legacy Origins Megatron, Senator Ratbat, and out of the two Senators, which is your favourite? You know, again, I'm kind of edging slightly more here towards the Senator Shockwave, but my only criticism would be that he doesn't come with a weapon. You know, this guy came with a blaster, so would have been nice to have seen them give this guy at least something. But again, I mean, maybe he can rip these pieces off, use them as daggers, and slice and dice Senator Ratbat up if he wants to. And and then finally, here he is alongside the data clerk, Orion Pax. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Legacy Evolution Humble Origins 2-Pack. To be honest, I think these are by far some of the best retool slash repaints that Hasbro have released in the past couple of years. And the same can also be said for the Rise of Tyranny set. You know, these IDW figures, this whole subline that Hasbro have got going on is so awesome. You know, to see these characters, characters which we have never really before seen in the Generations line, such as Senator Ratbat, such as Senator Shockwave, is just so great. Because how many times have we seen a redo of a G1 Optimus Prime, a G1 Bumblebee, a G1 Megatron. It definitely is great to see Hasbro finally stepping out of the box and I'm going to be real with you all. I think IDW has some of the best looking designs that we've ever seen. So for two retools, I think they're incredibly clever and personally, I think are better than their original mold mates. So I'd love to get your thoughts on this set down in the comment section below. What do you guys think in particular of the Senator Shockwave? And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.